Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam and I want to welcome you to another Eye Clarity podcast. We have a very interesting guest today. She's a friend of mine. I actually met her on Clubhouse and I was on her Instagram show and she's an amazing healer. Her name is Dr. Kirsten DeWitt. She's a licensed naturopathic doctor, registered acupuncturist, and she is based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's a beautiful place. She is um, in a private practice. She's got a virtual naturopathic practice where she utilizes things like traditional Chinese medicine, naturopathy, training in mind-body medicine. She's also done a lot of things in the mental health world. She just hosted a health summit, and uh, I'd like to bring her on, uh, Dr. DeWitt. Thanks for joining us. And I want to start in and I want to ask you, why is it important to begin to address the mind, mental, emotional component to health early on? Hmm. Yes, thank you so much for for having me on, Dr. Sam. It's so great to see you again and to be able to chat with you. It's always a Mm -hmm. pleasure chatting with you. Um, So I, for, for me, what I kind of discovered as I began working with people uh, with naturopathic medicine is that if you, if we don't address the, what I call the inner self or that mental emotional component of the self, it's really challenging to be able to stick with something, right? So often with naturopathic medicine, we're, we're, counseling people on how to make those lifestyle changes that are going to help them in the long term. And that takes work, right? It takes, you have to have the mindset to be able to make those changes, right? Because often we've developed these behaviors and these patterns really early on. Um, Our environment can influence those, right? There's a lot of external factors. So we need to have that internal or intrinsic drive to want to make those changes. And so if the mind isn't on board, right, it's really hard to get the momentum to have the body on board as well. And so it's really important to start with the mind, to start with that inner self uh, so that we can connect with that part of ourself and have a deeper drive to want to make those changes and a deeper understanding of ourselves so that we can, we can really see why these changes are the right changes for me, right? For the person as an individual, because I think mm-hmm. often what we're seeing, especially now, there's so much information, right? Everyone's inundated with just so much information and we don't know what's right for us. And Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important. And I know that you speak to this too, just really tuning into kind of that inner guide and just really better understanding ourselves and, and what, you know, what is best for, for us. And so it takes that, that inner knowing and, and just really Mm -hmm. um, a deeper understanding of ourselves and also what got us to where we are so that we can begin to make those small shifts so that we can get to where we're going. So like mm-hmm. I mentioned, what, yeah. what I noticed is if you don't start with that part, then that's mm-hmm. where we find people who, you know, they'll stick with something for maybe a week or a couple of weeks, and then they find themselves right back to where they started, right? We get stuck again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, at least in your field, there's, you know, um, an idea of holism or holistic health in vision care, there's nothing discussed about uh, the intrinsic, the inner self, the mind. I mean, that's one of the first obstacles I have to penetrate with people 
to go, well, this is an inside job. And I love yeah. what you say, health and healing from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So it brings me to my next uh, question is, how does our past, uh, so this would be our belief systems, our attitudes, our behaviors, you know, how is that formative in the people that you treat? You know, what are you looking at uh, because you're absolutely right. It, you know, we can just externalize it, take the vitamin, do the right. lifestyle change, the diet. But so what, give, give us some insight into how these past uh, imprints affect people's health. Yeah. So just like I was mentioning, you know, a lot of our behaviors are derived from our environment, the world around us, our upbringing, <clears throat> our culture, just all of these things that, you know, we were surrounded with and kind of learned how to be based on the world around us as we grew up. And so we start to develop these behaviors and these patterns. Uh, for instance, you know, there's just, there's a lot of different uh, cultural traditions. And so maybe you have birthday cake on your birthday, right? That's just kind of what you do. You have ice cream, you have birthday cake, or maybe in your household every night before you went to bed, you had an ice cream, uh, or maybe you watch TV, you know, with your family, or there's just these different things that each family or home or culture has kind of embedded in. And so they become what we do. And if we don't take a moment to kind of step back and ask, is this what is best serving me? Or is this what is best for my body, right? Then we can kind of go down, we can continue on with these behaviors and patterns uh, without really, you know, taking a second, second thought about it. And, and that's where we can get into a little bit of trouble, right? Because there's, there's a difference between intentionally choosing you know, um, to have a treat, right? It's, it's summer, it's warm out. A lot of people are getting ice cream, which is great, right? But it's important to also just ask yourself, am I choosing this or is it a pattern? Is it something that has already been chosen for me, right? By my culture, by my family, by by um, on and on and on right um yeah, and, and yeah, so there's yeah. just so many things that we just don't even recognize that we do um just because it's a habit at this point in our life right it, so, be, it becomes so unconscious that yeah. we uh you know we don't even know that we have another option and that's why people like us you know when they do have a symptom and we're able to get to the cause of it and we can start identifying, uh, you know, what what are some things you can do to change? I know one of the the things you've written uh, has to do with what are the steps? You know, what mm -hmm. what are the steps to make healthier choices? So, from your perspective, what would you say? Yeah. So, I think the biggest part, um, and one of the things that one of the reasons why I love in naturopathic medicine, we do a really thorough intake. And I'm sure your practice is very similar. Uh, we take a lot of time with our mm -hmm. clients and our patients at the beginning, because we really want to understand, you know, how did someone get to where they are, right? What happened in their life? Um, and what, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and what changes <laughs> Ganoff wanted to join us today? Um, so, so what happens, you know, in this person's life that kind of led them to where they are, and that helps to tell us where there's room for change. And so the first piece is that reflection, right? Gaining more awareness about yourself. And, you know, if you're working with someone, allowing them to gain more awareness about you. So then we can start gathering information. And we can, and mm. from there, we can know, okay, where do we need a little bit more information? So we might have someone maybe uh, track their food or track their time, right? I think something that we overlook is how we spend our time and our energy. Uh, so often mm -hmm. when we say we don't have time, what we may really mean is we don't have the energy to do something. And so how are we mm -hmm. spending our energy um, and mm -hmm. So we might have someone track, again, just gaining a little bit more awareness, 
um, into how someone is feeling throughout the day, right? If someone wants to work on migraines, well, okay, when are you starting to feel them? Uh, because for some people, maybe it's when they come home, maybe their environment isn't mm -hmm. what they want it to, to be, right? But mm -hmm. we wouldn't know that unless we start to really gather some of that information. So uh, the first step is, is the awareness piece. It's gathering information, yeah. gaining more awareness. Um, and then the second piece is, is really to do with, and I know that you talk about this as well, is self-regulation and, and really learning mm -hmm. how to uh, create a gap between uh, the habit or the pattern or the behavior and a choice, right? We want to be able mm -hmm. to, to make the choice. And so that comes mm -hmm. first gaining the self-awareness. And then second is gaining a little more self-regulation so that we can begin to pause before we start to, before we make the same choice that kind of got us to where we currently are. Right. Um, and so, so the pause and that self-regulation is, is the next step. Mm -hmm. And then from there, mm -hmm. uh, resiliency is is really uh, what kind of brings it full circle, in my opinion, because there's always going to be roadblocks, there's always going to be obstacles, there's always going to be, you know, life is is a bit unpredictable, right? A little uncertain. Mm -hmm. And so we never really know like what what life might throw our mm -hmm. way. And so resiliency is saying, okay, but despite this, I still have the ability to choose. Right. And so it's mm -hmm. it's really practicing um, and honing in on, on listening to ourselves, knowing when to take a break or, you know, when it uh, when, you know, maybe I'm not in the space to, to continue with this change, I need to pause and then I come back to it. Right. So resiliency is is really honing into that that inner knowing that inner guide a little bit more mm -hmm. so that we can mm -hmm. we can know when do I need to rest? When do I need to pause? Uh, when do I need to power on? Right. So, yeah. so it goes awareness, um, empowerment, and then resiliency is, is sure. that, that cycle of how we start to, to really make lasting change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, you bring up some really good points. I, I know that in my practice, I, I counsel families and some of the kids have developmental delays and we have something called the daily plan of organization where uh, the, the parents and the children get together and they come up with a schedule because there's that structure that, that helps them, uh, number one, stay on task. And number two, that self-awareness that you talk about. And then the resiliency piece. I remember one of my teachers used to say, you know, it's great to be disoriented and then you have to work to reorient. And that neurological flexibility is so important in developing that resiliency. And in today's healthcare climate, I think we're being asked to do that, you know, through our immune health, our digestive health, reducing inflammation, you know, all the things that you talk about. But what I want to get to the to the root of it, and I know you talk about this a lot. By the way, we're here with Dr. Kirsten DeWitch. He's a naturopathic physician. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncturist, and she's based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So we're coming down towards the end, and I want to make sure I get this question uh, for you. How does health of the mind impact the body and the body impact the mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is probably my biggest, you know, something that I really try to get people to understand. This is why mm -hmm. I love acupuncture and this is why I yes. love mind body medicine. This is why I love naturopathic medicine because um, they're, you know, they're holistic systems and, and the body sure. is, it's all connected, right? So <laughs> it, it's inevitable that one thing is going to impact another, right? Absolutely. So learning more about the gut brain access, about the mm -hmm. heart brain access, about the heart gut access, right? But it's because they're all connected. That's just how, you know, our nervous system, if you look at our nervous system, it innervates the whole body, right? From our head to our toes, to our organs. And so 
when you when you just take a look at that alone, it, it really there is no question of how interconnected everything really is. So it's so important to be able to look at um, the the body as a whole and to see how deeply connected they are. Right. So uh, just yesterday, so I work at I also do um, the NADA protocol, which is an auricular acupuncture protocol for addiction and uh, and and trauma. And so I was just doing a little uh, a little meditation with a group the other day that I work on this with. And um, and what I had them do was just bring to mind, you know, things that they're wanting to let go, right? And taking a moment and noticing just by having those thoughts how your body feels, right? Because we have a physiological change right? Maybe our heart rate starts to increase or our, palm, our palms start to sweat. We have this physiological change just to these thoughts, right? Or memories um, or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. And so for them to be able to recognize, wow, when I, ha when I think about this thing, I, this is how my body feels. That's a big shift in awareness just to be able to start oh to recognize, right? How those Incredible. things you know, and then to be able to shift that to, okay, now what are things that you want to bring into your life, right? Mm -hmm. Think about those things, like what are, what are just Amazing. three of those things? And then notice mm -hmm. like how your body feels when just thinking mm -hmm. about those things, right? Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. just gaining that self-awareness of if I'm inundating myself with these negative thoughts or these, these mm -hmm. negative behaviors or patterns, how how is my body feeling with that right what am i putting right. on my body in that way sure and so yeah. with that we start to see you know maybe someone comes in and they have constipation and 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 they you know they run the gamut of tests and they don't find anything mm. structural right um, right so so that's when we need to start thinking about okay well you know um, how, how are, how are their thoughts? Right. Right. Maybe they're yeah. holding on to something. Um, and, and so that's when we can really start to notice just how, mm -hmm. how impactful our mind is to our body. And we know that it goes both ways. Um, so mm -hmm. in acupuncture, we talk about like stagnation of the blood or stasis of the blood or uh, stagnation of the chi. And so, so traditional Chinese medicine already kind of has this understanding of how mm -hmm. uh, how the the body and the mind are connected you see that like in the five element theory each organ is connected with a different emotion um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's not quite as translated into western medicine though and not at all um, but we not at all right but now we're starting to recognize okay we know that the gut microbiome right can mm -hmm. have changes in our mood and it can it can impact the health of our brain and and of our mind and so we're starting to understand how deeply connected the body mm -hmm. is to the mind and they're, they're one and the same because yeah. it's, it's all connected yeah. it just is it's so, all connected yeah. that's as simple so as i, I <laughs> I, I know that you do virtual naturopathic consultations. How can people get in touch with you? What, what are the best avenues? Yeah, so um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, now my um, I'm kind of shifting, uh, like I was mentioning to you earlier, simplifying down, right? Simplify to amplify. And so now you can find me um, at vibrantly.well on Instagram, or you can find me on my website, vibrantlywell.com. And so that's where you okay. can book a, uh, I do a free 15 minute consultation where we can kind of talk mm -hmm. about, you know, what might be the right path for you um, before, before getting started. But um, I just, I love working with people um, in any capacity mm -hmm. that I can. And so helping people virtually just allows me to, to help more people. Great. So I will put uh, your contact information on the podcast notes. And I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us today. And I wish you the best of luck. And uh, we'll, we'll see you down the road sometime. All right.
great. Thank you so much. Always great talking with you, Dr. Sam. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the iClarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.